51 Pegasi b, officially named Dimidium in 2015, was the first exoplanet ever found around a sun-like star, and the first hot Jupiter discovered. Its discovery was one of the most important events in exoplanet science, and paved the way for discovering the thousands of exoplanets we know of today. But what is Dimidium actually like? In the 30 years since we found it, what have we learned about it? And besides being the first around a sun-like star, what makes it unique from other exoplanets? Welcome to a new series I'm making this week, Iconic Exoplanets. Each day for the next week or so, I'll be revisiting a well-known exoplanet to see how our knowledge about it has changed over the last few years, find out what truly makes it unique, and try to give you a better understanding of the exoplanets you've heard about the most. This video will be about 51 Pegasi b, or Dimidium. Dimidium was discovered in 1995. At the time, only three exoplanets were confirmed to exist, the rocky worlds of Draugr, Poltergeist, and Phobator orbiting the Pulsar Lich, though none of them have been given those names yet. It was found around the star 51 Pegasi, later named Helvidios, a star about 9% more massive than the Sun, 50 light years from Earth. Shortly after its discovery, it was designated 51 Pegasi b, but was unofficially named Bellerophon, named after the Greek mythological figure who rode the Pegasus. Unfortunately, this name was never made official, mainly because the guy who proposed it was found to be in violation of his university's sexual assault policies, so the name Bellerophon was forgotten, and in 2015, 51 Pegasi b was officially named Dimidium. It was named this because Dimidium means half in Latin, and the planet is half the mass of Jupiter. This is objectively a worse name than Bellerophon, and it is kind of a shame that such an important exoplanet was named half, but it is what it is. Anyways, Dimidium is about 46% the mass of Jupiter, but is between 10 and 30% larger than Jupiter in radius. This means that Dimidium has a much lower density than Jupiter, which is typical of many hot Jupiters like it. The intense heat of these planets causes their atmospheres to expand, leading to increased sizes despite their lower masses. This heat can also tell us a bit about Dimidium's appearance. While we know less about it than other hot Jupiters, we've studied these types of planets enough to make guesses as to what they look like. Dimidium's temperature is somewhere around 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, or 980 Celsius, which is similar to the measured temperature of the more well-studied hot Jupiter HD 189733b, which I'll cover in a later video. HD 189733b was actually one of the very few exoplanets with a known color, that being blue. So, based on the color of HD 189733b, as well as this diagram about the appearances of gas giants as temperature changes, I've chosen to depict Dimidium as a blue planet for this video. While there haven't been any actual observations of the planet to confirm its color, based on its temperature and the colors of similar planets, Dimidium being blue is as good of a guess as any. Though just be aware that's still speculative. Dimidium is also probably hot enough for its night side to glow red. Speaking of which, Dimidium is tightly locked to its star Helvidios, which was named at the same time as the planet itself. It's slightly bigger than the Sun, and is fairly typical for stars we find hot Jupiters around. It's estimated that about 1% of stars similar to the Sun, like Helvidios, have a hot Jupiter around them. Dimidium orbits Helvidios at a distance of about 0.05 AU, just 5% the distance Earth orbits the Sun, and much closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. This distance is actually so close you can make illustrations of the system with the planet, star, and distance all to scale. This image is, from what I can tell, accurate to how close Dimidium is to Helvidios, with the sizes of both objects to scale. The planet takes just 4.2 days to orbit Helvidios, making its year less than a week long. It's currently unknown how Dimidium got to this distance from its star. As I talked about in my video about Tylos, another hot Jupiter, gas giants are expected to form in the outer regions of their systems, where there's enough volatile materials to allow them to form. In the case of Tylos, the chemical composition of its atmosphere confirms that it forms somewhere around 20 AU away from its star, 1,000 times further away than it is today. Less is known about Dimidium, but something similar could have happened. Migration is one of the most likely ways for hot Jupiters to form, because the other option is they formed where they are today, which is difficult because the inner system of forming stars have far less hydrogen and other volatiles needed for gas giants to form. Dimidium was discovered with radial velocity, and it doesn't transit its star from our perspective. This makes characterizing its atmosphere difficult, which is why, despite knowing about this planet for 30 years, we know very little about its composition. So, unlike Tylos, we can't say for certain where Dimidium formed. This also brings up the question of other planets in the system. If Dimidium formed in the outer system and migrated inward, that could affect the formation of other planets in the system. For example, maybe it disturbed the inner system, prohibiting the formation of inner rocky planets. This depends highly on if Dimidium ever migrated in the first place, and if it did, where it migrated from, what path it took, and how long it took. 
Those are all things we don't currently know, but could theoretically find out if additional planets are ever found in the system. Ironically, despite being the first hot Jupiter ever found, most of what we can say about Domitium is based on what we know about other hot Jupiters that were found later. I already mentioned this in the context of its color and formation history, but it applies to its composition as well. Like most hot Jupiters, it's possible that Domitium's clouds made of silicates in its atmosphere, rocky material vaporized by the high temperatures. We can also assume it's tidally locked to its star with a permanent day and night side, and because of this likely has very fast wind speeds, and potentially large differences in temperature between the day and night side. Though keep in mind that's all speculation based on other hot Jupiters we know more about. Maybe Domitium has something unique about it that we haven't discovered yet. Several hot Jupiters of candidate exomoons, for example, including both HD 18973b and Tylos, so maybe Domitium has a moon system as well that we simply can't see yet. However, this doesn't mean we can't find out anything interesting about it, and many people have tried. In 2015, one paper claimed a detection of reflected visible light coming off of Domitium, which could not only indicate a high albedo for the planet, but also a much larger radius almost double the size of Jupiter. However, these results were unable to be replicated by others, and more recent studies couldn't detect any light coming from the planet. If the visible light detection was a false positive, then they would actually indicate the opposite, that Domitium has a low albedo and a radius 20% larger than Jupiter. These observations would suggest a low albedo below 0.15, which would indicate that Domitium is significantly less reflective than Jupiter. Low albedos among hot Jupiters aren't uncommon either, the planet Trace 2b reflects just 1% of the light that hits it. Unfortunately, we may not know anything more about Domitium than this for a while. Because it doesn't transit its star, there aren't many good ways to characterize its atmosphere, making learning about this planet difficult. Everything from its atmospheric composition to its weather patterns, wind speeds, and even the differences between its dayside and nightside temperatures remain unknown for now. You'd think we know more about the fourth exoplanet ever confirmed to exist, but unfortunately it's much harder to observe than the other hot Jupiters we know more about. This is also something I should clarify before this video ends. Many people have said that Domitium was the first exoplanet ever found, but it wasn't. There are at least three planets before it, the Lich planets I've already mentioned. I say at least because there were other candidates before Domitium too, but were confirmed later. Like Tadmor, which was discovered as a candidate in 1988, seven years before Domitium, but its existence wasn't confirmed until 2004. However, while Domitium may have not been the first exoplanet, it still has a ton of things that make it important. In short, while we may not know much about Domitium itself, it was the first hot Jupiter, and the first exoplanet in general around a sun-like star. Its discovery created the opportunity to find more planets like it later, which we then used to indirectly learn more about this one. While most of the information in this video was speculative, it was speculation based on real data about other planets we never would have found without first discovering Domitium. This planet is still hiding a lot of secrets from its history to its present day environment, and hopefully we learn more about it soon. Until then, Domitium will remain one of the most iconic exoplanets, with its own unique place in the history of astronomy. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, stay tuned for the rest of the iconic exoplanet series, which I'll be trying to upload one episode of every day this week.